As you're well aware, we're living in unprecedented times. Join us now for today's special program. I want to spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend today. My name is John Dinsey, and it's a pleasure for me to welcome you on behalf of your 3ABN family. I would like to encourage you to join me in the reading of the scriptures in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Today we are focusing on Christian education, and to continue this process of training our young people not only to serve in the world, but also to let their light so shine before men that they may see their good works and glorify our, our Heavenly Father. We have two academies that we want to focus on today, the Indiana Academy and the Milo Academy. Now, considering these two schools, these are Christian Seventh-day Adventist schools. I went most of my life to secular schools, and I can tell you, it is a challenging environment. I was offered drugs. I was offered the uh, privilege, they called it, to join a gang. But these Christian academies offer something different, offer our young people an opportunity not only to learn the academic subjects which are necessary for school, but also to learn more on Jesus Christ. They lift up the standard of truth. They help our young people to be prepared to face life's challenges because it is a challenging world we live in, a challenging world indeed. Today's difficult times demand that our young people are offered the best opportunity to train themselves not only to face life, because we know that Satan is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So we want to encourage you to consider the Academy, Indiana Academy, Pastor John Lomacang will be focusing on this academy. He's the pastor of the Thompsonville Seventh-day Adventist Church, and also you have seen him on many programs here on 3ABN. The second academy that we would like to focus on is Milo Christian Seventh-day Adventist Academy. Sister Gio Morricone, our Vice President and COO, will be talking to our folks, our friends at the Milo Academy, so that you can learn about these academies, learn what they have to offer, and then you will see that there are other opportunities, uh, good options that you should consider for your young people. So now, it is my pleasure to uh, hand it over to Pastor John Lomacang as he starts us off with the Indiana Academy, and then we will hear Sister Gio Morricone with the Milo Adventist Academy. Hello, and welcome to a very important segment about Christian education, more specifically, Seventh-day Adventist Christian education. And today in our segment, we're highlighting the Indiana Academy. And I have with me today, uh, Steve Bauman, who is the principal of the Indiana Adventist Academy. Steve, are you there? Hi. Hi, Pastor John. Thanks for having me. Yes, good to have you. Good to have you. I tell you, we're thinking about education and what a challenging year this has been uh, 2020 is an amazing time for anyone to be alive, uh, such an unpredictable time. But um, before I go into talking about the challenges of and the blessings of uh, Christian education, more specifically at Adventist Academy there in Indiana, just give our audience a little overview of who you are, what you do, and where you're from. Sure. So uh, my name is Steve Boffman. I, uh, I actually 
was born in Michigan, but I grew up here in Indiana. I'm an alumni of Indiana Academy. So in a sense, I have uh, come full circle and I have, in fact, come back home uh, here to IA. Uh, I went to Southern Adventist University. Uh, when I graduated there, I just had a burden and a passion to work in our boarding schools because of the role boarding schools had played in my life. And I, uh, I taught for 10 years in Tennessee, and now I am starting my eighth year here at Indiana Academy as the principal. Wow. And so just blessed, blessed to serve, and it's a, it's, a, it's a good work if you can get it. Wow, it's your time to give back, and that's a good thing. I've, I've seen in the past some students have gone to academy or gone to their universities or ro grown up in similar situations, but it's so good to know that you can come back to a familiar territory. Is it the same school that you were raised in or the same school you went to? You know, it was... Um it was kind of surreal. I actually, uh, when I when I walked in the door for my interview, two of my former teachers were here to greet me, and so that was a, a surreal experience. It was a, it was a good experience, and they, you know, I was nervous at first. Okay, how is this going to work? But uh, they welcomed me with a warm embrace, and I knew we were going to do great things. So it's been a lot of fun, and now I'm blessed. I've been able to actually hire some of my former students, and wow. so this is uh, it's 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 a joy to be in service for the Lord. I think the phrase that fits here is you went back to the future. <laughs> That's right. That's, That's interesting. Right. Very apropos. <laughs> wow. Well, tell our audience a little bit about Indiana Academy, uh, because some people might say, I know exactly where Indiana Academy is. They may even be an alumni of Indiana, Indiana Academy, but some people might say, I'd like to know more about uh, Christian education, specifically Adventist uh, Christian education at Indiana Academy. Give us an overview before we dive into the... Uh, what Indiana Academy does specifically. Sure, so we're located in Cicero, Indiana. We're about 30 minutes, 35 minutes north, northeast of Indianapolis. Uh, we are a secondary boarding academy, so that means we service uh, grades nine through 12. Uh, we're a co-educational school, so guys and girls, uh, each living in separate dorms, uh, attend. Uh, we offer a, um, a fairly standard um, curriculum experience, academic uh, classes and things of that nature, but then we incorporate a lot of our um, critical elements that we think are important to a well-rounded and balanced education. Mm -hmm. And so we're here in uh, rural Indiana, but not too far out of town that uh, you can't get to where you need to get in time. Wow. Well, I know the school is more than 100 years old. What's the founding date of the Adventist Academy there in Indiana? Sure. So Indiana Academy originally started as a uh, as a training institution, as many of our uh, institutions did in 1902 wow. uh, in Bogstown, Indiana, and then shortly after that relocated here to uh, the lovely hills of Cicero. Well, at the time there were hills. Since then, uh, those hills have kind of been eradicated. But uh, mm. the lovely hills of Cicero since 1902. Wow. And you have an, a student population in the average of how many? Yeah, so we, uh, we've been averaging over the last five to eight years about 110 students, and so that's been a, a nice number. We're not um, a terribly large school. We're, um, our, our girls' dorm is actually at capacity this year, mm -hmm. and so we, uh, we have room for a few more students, but we're maybe built to really be in that 130 to 150 range, so we're okay. not too far off of an ideal number. Good, good. That, that gives you an opportunity to be more of a one-to-one, -one, not an overwhelming environment because some schools are that's so right. large that sometimes students feel like they get lost in the sauce and they don't feel that's, that. That's right. uh, yeah, so a very homey environment. That's right, we, uh, we do. We have a, a nice relationship. It's about a 10 to one staff to student ratio or student to staff ratio. Mm -hmm. So you get to actually know the students. We, uh, we form faculty families where our students come into our faculty homes uh, from time to time throughout the year. We really wanna get to know our students, know their names when we're passing them in the hallway. Uh, be able to stop and pray with them and uh, really foster those relationships. I think it's those relationships that are what um, set Seventh-day Adventist education apart and uh, specifically something we focus on heavily here at Indiana Academy. Good. Now, because of it being a, an Adventist Academy, uh, do you include Bible in your curriculum? And I'm just asking that question for our audience. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we, we absolutely have a religious program. Uh, we incorporate Bible into each of our um, core years, you know, ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th. 
uh, and so on. Each year has a Bible class. And then beyond that, we have regular worship experiences, worship service, uh, really wanting to focus on um, equipping our students with skills for personal evangelism. So not only can they grow their faith, but then they can go and share that faith. Mm. And uh, that call to action that I think our Adventist schools are um, are called to, to be something special about. So if you define the mission of, of your academy, what would it be? So our mission here is to educate the whole student to know and serve God in their community. We want them to know God, develop that relationship that can save their lives for eternity, but then to use that knowledge to serve and uh, to go out and be missionaries wherever uh, wherever their paths may lead. Once they uh, once I shake their hand in May and grant them a diploma, we want them to realize that they can be missionaries wherever they're called to serve. Have you as a, how long have you been there as the principal? You may have mentioned that. This is, yeah, no, this is the start of my eighth year. So seven full years, and this is number eight. Okay. Wow. That's, that's a wonderful thing to be able to do. You know, I would think, uh, as you talked about the surreal experience of coming into the building where you actually was a student and then seeing some of your former teachers, uh, how long, I'm just kind of asking a completely different question, how long did it take for you to flip out of the student mode into the teacher's mode when you're exiting a class because, you know, you're kind of going back, am I going to class or am I going to teach the next class? Well, that's that's accurate. You know, part of it, uh, it was actually a little bit of a call to action because I walked into our science lab when I first came back and I said, friends, this can't look the exact same as when I graduated X years ago. And so we got to work renovating some things. We felt like it was time to maybe do some updates and uh, to do some proper renovations to some of our programs. You know, I shouldn't find my name carved in the same desk I sat in as a sophomore. <laughs> and so oh we, uh, we, uh, we, we had to make a few adjustments. But um, thankfully, I'd been blessed with a lot of opportunities um, to serve on some different committees while I was a teacher for 10 years in Tennessee. And so I think that helped me transition out of that mode of, um, okay, I'm so green that I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but uh, we, we hit the ground running pretty quickly. Uh, I, I felt the call to come into administration because of what I felt like our Seventh-day Adventist schools could strive to be. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I felt like this school was um, leaning that direction already with some of the programs that uh, my predecessor had helped establish. Mm -hmm. And so I was excited to come here and uh, really get to work about incorporating element, elements of service into our school. That is really nice. I like, I like how you said that. Uh, there shouldn't be the same desk that I carved my name in. And that's a, that is a call to action. I like that. You know, and sometimes we, uh, we get mad at these kids, uh, you know, for some of their behaviors and some of their decisions. And sometimes we forget that maybe we used to be kids too. And so uh, that helps build that relationship to stay humble and recognize I probably wasn't always on the right side of uh, the principal's desk when I was a, a student here myself. Yeah. You know, somebody once said, uh, what, kind of, uh, what kind of Christian are you? And somebody once said, a pantheist. And they said, what is that? I said, well, it all pans out in the end. <laughs> and, uh, but that's good to see where you started and where you are now making an impact. You know, you brought a video. We have a video we'd like to show about the Indiana Adventist Academy. And uh, just tell us kind of what we're going to see in this role. Sure. So this is um, uh, some of them are there's still shots of some of the, the programs and some of the areas of emphasis here on our campus. We are really um, embracing um, um, education that equips students to take action. And so you'll see pictures of our students serving others in different capacities as we serve them. And it's just uh, an exciting uh, hopefully a, a brief snapshot of some of the experience here at IA. And the uh, the music that is being sung is by our um, select choir. And so I was excited. It was something together during our um, coronavirus shutdown last school year. Okay, well, let's go to that role right now about Indiana Adventist Academy. <laughs>
hope you were blessed by that video. And before I go back to our principal, maybe you might be thinking about where you'd like your son or daughter to go to school. I'd like to recommend uh, the Indiana Adventist Seventh-day Adventist Academy. And uh, Steve, are you there? I am here, John. Thank wow. you so much. That was very inspiring. I like that uh, multiple screen. I always wonder how they do that. I've seen that a few times that that was beautiful. Now, are those present students or some of those are prior students? Um, some, of those, uh, some of those photos are over the last year or two, but fairly, fairly recently. Um, but now the students who were singing, that was our select choir at the end of the school year last year when we were shut down due to uh, the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. um, we continued with remote instruction. And so our, we, one of the big struggles was, what do you do with your music classes? We didn't want to just outright cancel them. And right. so our music director, uh, Philip Bird, who is an incredibly talented individual and musician himself, he, uh, he worked with some of the different software programs to make sure that they could continue to uh, rehearse, to practice, mm -hmm. and uh, eventually put together that piece kind of as a final um, end-of-year uh, performance. Wow. Well, thank you for that. That was wonderful. Tell us about some of your community service projects, uh, because you talked about the community service-oriented aspects of the educational program there. That's right. We, uh, we have a program. It's been around for, um, I believe it's its 10th year, 11th year now, and it's called Project 58. It's based on uh, the principles of Isaiah 58, you okay. know, um, a counsel, counsel to take care of others, to serve others, and then your light might shine. Right. And, uh, and we go out once a month, uh, our entire student body, our full faculty and staff, and we, um, we serve in different, uh, we call them service pods, where we go and we go serve in different uh, capacities. Um, so our students will go work at a food bank, or we have students who go and work with the uh, Christmas Behind Bars ministry located yeah. in northern Indiana. We, um, we work at some of the elementary schools. We have a group of students who bake cookies and deliver them to local community businesses. And mm. it's, uh, it's a good time when, um, you know, some the students will go to a business and, uh, and the business will start to recognize them because the same students will serve each month. And they'll say, oh, finally, we've been waiting for, to see you guys again. And, uh, and it's just a lot of fun um, to, uh, to be able to go out and build relationships with our community. You know, yes. one of my, um, one of my uh, calls to action has always been, if our school didn't open, would anybody outside of our circle know? Hmm. And, uh, and that's, that's always kind of been a, a sense of humbling uh, recognition that we have a role to play, not just to stay open. You know, if we aren't ministering to our community, if we aren't ministering to our neighbors, if we aren't developing those relationships, uh, what really are we doing? And so we want to equip our students and enable them to be a part of that kind of service while they are still students here, not waiting for some, um, some uh, idea of the real world. The real world is now, and these kids are experiencing it. That's right. I'm glad you have that attitude as a principal, because a lot of times we say, the, our young people are the church of tomorrow, but if we make yeah. them the church of today, then they'll be ready for tomorrow. Thank you for that dedication. Talk about your work programs there, because I know you talked about the community aspect, but what about the work programs that students could get involved in, maybe for credit or some kind of benefit to their education? No, that's right. And uh, I think it's important our students are developing work ethics now, and uh, we want to equip them with some of those skills. And so uh, nearly 100 percent of our student body is actively employed uh, and primarily employed by us here at the academy, but in different roles and different avenues. You know, you have your your standard, maybe um, teacher's assistants or janitorial type thing. But we have a couple of exciting programs. Uh, we have an Indi Indiana assembly and packaging program here where we make and assemble things on contract and our students do that um, as part of their uh, daily program. But then also here recently, Indiana Academy has taken over the um, managerial role of the Adventist Book Center okay. that was previously operated by the Michigan Conference. Um, they, uh, they were making some changes there in the Michigan Conference related to the ABC. And so we have a, a physical building located here on our campus, and uh, it kind of made sense to incorporate that into Indiana Academy's mission as well. Mm -hmm. And so that's that just started here recently, but we're hoping to grow that to be a, a, a part and a component of our program here with students uh, working there at the ABC, but also maybe using it as a community outreach center as well. Okay. Uh, also part of that, there's a biology water cleaning project. Talk about that. Sure. So this is something um, that's kind of exciting. It's, um, it's, a, it's that idea of putting our education into practice. 
And so when we go and we rake a lady's yard, you know, which is a fantastic opportunity to minister and to serve that lady, that's um, that's kind of a pure sense of community service. Uh, we want to see also, though, what we are doing in the classroom being incorporated into acts of service. Mm -hmm. And so uh, our biology teacher, Mr. Art Miller, who's fantastic, he has worked with the, uh, the local city here and their clean water project where our students, as a part of their biology class, will go and take water samples from the creek that, um, that runs adjacent to our property here. Mm. And then they'll, they'll analyze that as a part of their class. But then the data that they're finding, and normally in a, a traditional school environment, maybe you just make a PowerPoint, you present to your classmates. Right. They're actually taking that data and uploading it to a state database about the water cleanliness in the state of Indiana. Wow. So what they are doing is applying their learning, you know, biology, but actually using it in a way that the, the greater state of Indiana can benefit from. And that's really what we want to see happening uh, through our entire curriculum is elements of intentional service mm -hmm. that is then being um, being able to use the uh, the practical side of the content they're being exposed to. Wow. And I know that we have this environment where touch and social distancing is all you know, discombobulated, wearing masks and how yeah. many feet apart and when you cough, turn your head and wash your hands for 20 seconds. How is the academy fitting into this responding COVID environment? Sure. So it definitely has been, um, it's been a bit of an experience to go through as everybody's had to adjust. So did we. And uh, we shut down last year when the governor ordered that schools would go to remote learning. And then we were prayerfully making plans to be able to reopen this school year. And, and, and thankfully, uh, that has happened. We were able to uh, to reopen, reopen our dorms. Uh, we've been investing in a lot of a lot of hand sanitizer. I could probably mm. fill an Olympic swimming pool with hand sanitizer. <laughs> wow! But um, but we've still been able to maintain uh, the relationships, and we're having to reprogram some of our regular programs where maybe we take students out on a Saturday night. Um, you know, maybe we'd go ice skating or something like that. We're having to reevaluate each of those programs to make sure that what we do is uh, safe. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're we're able to kind of even more foster that small uh, family relationship. Uh, we've been doing bonfires on campus. We've been spending a lot of time outdoors, just getting fresh air and being uh, being uh, reasonably socially distanced away from our neighbors. But oh. uh, it's been a it's been a good thing. How are you social distancing in your classrooms? Because I know that listening to the news, that's been a dr tremendous concern for parents all around our nation. In some cases in different countries. Uh, and I saw one example where uh, it was on the news recently. In one classroom, they did not move the desks, but they built almost like a glass plexiglass cage <laughs> around the top of every desk. So the students, they were not far apart, but man, I tell you, they were really sequestered. How is it happening in your school? Sure. So we uh, we did do the plexiglass dividers in our cafeteria. We felt like um, where, the, where you're eating and you can't wear a mask, we felt like that that, that potential risk might be a, a little stronger in that area. So we did use the, uh, we built a bunch of plexiglass dividers there in our cafeteria and spread the chairs out, kind of minimize some of the seating at each table. Mm -hmm. In the classrooms, we spread the desks as much as possible. And we are having our students wear masks while they're in the classrooms. And if we can't kind of ensure that, um, that adequate social distancing. Uh, our students and our faculty and staff are all wearing their masks. Uh, we look forward to the day when that's not a thing, but uh, in right. the meantime, we'd rather, we'd rather be wearing our masks and be open than uh, be maskless and having to do remote education. You know, I saw one of the principals of one of our local schools, you know, they have a sports program. Kids play basketball casually, just in, in an intramural way. And I was amazed mm -hmm. they were running up, and down, ru running up and down the court with masks on. I thought, man, how is that? How are you assimilating that? Because I know that, you know, the young guys, they want to play pickup ball and maybe volleyball. Right. How are you doing that in a COVID environment? So we are um, we are allowing we, we do have an intramural program, kind of yeah. like what you're explaining, where it's maybe a little more casual, but it's still active uh, yeah. education. Uh, and we're following our state guidelines, which those state guidelines uh, have given some exemptions for maybe you, you don't need to wear a mask if you're participating in physical activity. Right. As long as you've maybe taken certain personal safety measures, you're, you're washing your hands, you're doing this type of thing before you begin. Right. And so uh, we are still we are still uh, having those moments where you know, they're teenagers, where teenagers can be teenagers. That's right. And um, 
And then um, just doing our, our best to still stress those um, personal sanitation practices, washing your hands, using hand sanitizer, uh, trying to avoid touching your face, those types of things. Now, what about the students that said, I want to be a student of the Indiana Academy, but I want to do it on distance learning. I'm not ready mentally to come into the classroom. Have you had to deal with that at all? You know, I, I, I was pleasantly surprised. This year, our enrollment was actually up over wow. last year. And we had a, a number of students applying even before we necessarily had rolled out our COVID protocols. Wow. And so there was, a, there was a desire and a passion to be in the boarding setting. Mm -hmm. And I think that that comes from knowing that we have a smaller school. I think that maybe there's a sense of safety, um, relative sense of safety. And we're hoping that uh, we continue to remain a, a safe and open environment here. But um, we haven't offered... Um, synchronous remote instruction, um, okay. but we are ready to go to remote learning if, uh, if for the sake of safety of our students or if the governor were to shift gears on education. We'd be ready to, to switch again, but uh, we much prefer the, uh, the in-campus, uh, on-campus, in-person experience. Okay. If a student is watching this program that's maybe thinking about an academy for the future, what would you say to that young man or that young lady? Uh, I would say give it to God. Uh, there are there are, it, it's an amazing thing. Uh, Seventh Day Adventist education is such a tremendous blessing, and there are so many quality schools out there. If uh, if you were to look at our school's website, and if you felt like Indiana Academy was the place for you, and you gave that to God, and you felt that that was where He was leading, I want you to be here. Mm -hmm. If you give it to God, and He makes you feel like maybe you should be at one of our other sister institutions or at another Adventist school, I want you to be there. Uh, I'm if God's calling you to Nineveh, I want you to be in Nineveh. I don't want to be any. <laughs> I don't want to be anybody's Tarshish, but uh, I tell you, uh, God's doing a good thing here on campus. It's a, it's a joy to be a part of it, and uh, God's doing a lot of powerful things across this, uh, across this division in Seventh-day Adventist schools, and I think now, more than ever, now is a time when our students need to hear the, the life-changing and world-changing message of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and it's, um, I'm, I'm in overwhelm, overwhelmingly blessed to be able to be a part of it here in Cicero at Indiana Academy. Well, thank you, Steve Bauman, the principal of the Indiana Adventist Academy. We thank you so much for taking the time to join us today, and if you'd like to find out more about the Academy, go to iasda.org. I'm John Loman King for 3ABN, and this is the blessing of what Christian education can, can do in your life and for your children. Welcome to Milo Adventist Academy, a Christian private boarding high school located in Southern Oregon. The entrance to our campus is a covered bridge, which is a local landmark. Milo is surrounded by national forests and sits along a full mile of the South Umpqua River allowing for learning beyond the classroom and opportunities to connect with God through nature. The campus has a covered oval walkway that connects all the buildings, the dormitories, the church, the cafeteria, and the classrooms. Hi, I'm Randy Thornton, principal at Milo Adventist Academy. I believe that location has a profound impact on the culture of any institution, and that's certainly the case here at Milo Adventist Academy. I had a colleague tell me when I first got here that students feel safe at Milo. I thought that was a little bit of a maybe even cheesy cliche and that they were talking about physical safety. I learned right away that certainly is true, but even more importantly, that kids feel safe to be themselves. Whether you're from another continent or uh, right here in our backyard, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, Kids feel safe to be who they are uh, here in the Milo family. So my name is Michael Dodge with Scale and Heston, and this is broad forking. I'm going to be a junior next year. As far as I can tell, it's just a manual way of doing the rototill. It helps break up the soil so that the roots of the new plants can grow inside. I like the fact that we're surrounded by nature. I like the seclusion, the ability to be myself, to be accepted. When I first came here, I immediately settled in and it felt like home. These things get bent out, uh, out, of, out of their uh, places sometimes, so... Hey Miner, could you help me? Yeah. Thanks. Oh, you got a hammer. 
Milo has a work study program which gives students an opportunity to do their part in funding their education. My name is Minor Aguilar and I'm here at Milo Academy learning how to do fabrication. So I got tired of beating that broad for yesterday. So now we're making some parts to make it good and fix it. On this broad fork, we'll test the piece we made and mm -hmm. see what it looks like. Okay. What do you see? I think we need to keep working on this side a little bit more so the end can touch. In addition to traditional classroom education, we provide a wide range of extracurricular and vocational classes, including photography, horsemanship, heavy equipment, residential construction, culinary arts, and so much more. This is our greenhouse for the agriculture program. These are our baby plants. We have some more over here. And we take these out to the garden and plant them. And it's helpful because we grow the food for the cafeteria and for the Milo market. So people can buy the food. And this is one of our baby cucumber plants, just about ready to be harvested. Welcome to Milo Academy Horse Barn. My name is Jeff Miller. Hello, my name is Michaela Frost, and this is Lucky. We have approximately 20 horses here. Some of them are private horses that students bring, some of them are big lake horses, and some of them are owned by Milo Academy. Here at Milo Academy, we have a horse boarding program where you can board your own horse. Milo Academy students built the arena and also the stalls. It gives the students a chance to get out in nature and go for horse rides. I hope you come to Milo Academy. Bring your horse when you come. Everyone knows that Adventist education is not cheap. I can assure you that Milo Academy doesn't have too much money, but what I have seen over and over again is that where there's a will, there's a way. One of the things that breaks my heart the most, and I've heard this on numerous occasions, that people just assume that it's out of their reach financially. And so they just don't even connect, they don't ask. Covering the costs of Milo Academy is absolutely doable for anybody, no matter your, your income level. We may not know all of the ways to make that happen, but God does. And when he's got a plan for your child, for you to be a student here at Milo Academy, it's gonna happen. We call it the Milo Miracle, and I've seen it work over and over again. Maybe you know somebody who should be here at Milo. Give us a call and let us know who that is, and we'll follow up. We gave away over $750,000 in student aid last year. Uh, add to that a wide range of scholarships that are available, and we've got a winning combination. Uh, we took a music tour not long ago, and homeschool kids do great at Milo. And after the program, a mom came up, and they had homeschooled their whole life and never considered Adventist Academy, but the heavy equipment program just absolutely captivated them, and they were here at Milo the next term. My name is Charles Sparks. I'm involved in the heavy equipment program. We offer opportunity for young men and women to run heavy equipment. The machines are easy to learn how to run, and they exert a lot of force. Safety first, above all. It's a talent, you know, it comes easy to some people, and those are the people that enjoy it. And uh, some people, it's, you know, it's, you can't get past running the machine, so it's hard to do the work. What I really appreciate about Charles is that uh, he's so patient with, with the students that sometimes have a hard time learning. That is really incredible to have teachers like that at Milo. Uh, the heavy equipment pieces that we have, we have a bulldozer, and an excavator, front end loader, a dump truck, and a little excavator. So we're always happy to have machines that are donated. We rebuilt a D6 cat uh, from the ground up right down to the paint. We couldn't do Milo Academy without the many partners, the, the donors that help make the Milo experience possible. Whether it's donated plants, heavy equipment, probably the biggest of all, the student aid funds that are so necessary for kids to be here. God has blessed us with a unique environment of international connection here with almost 30% of our student body coming from all around the world. I'm from Mexico City. I'm from Moscow, Russia. 
and we're international students here at Milo Adventist Academy learning how to do construction. We are so, so grateful for volunteers. Student missionaries, not us going to them, but them coming to us. If you've got a special skill, special talent, knowledge, career expertise in a particular field, we'd love to have you here to share a talk with our, our kids and our staff. Uh, I, I want to introduce you to the Milo guy, the guy with a little graduation hat, and we'd love nothing more than to see your student through the graduation line someday here at Milo. Here you guys have the brat fork all fixed. Not that beautiful, but not bad for my first time. Well, why don't you come to Milo? It's a great place to study, work, and fix the broad work. There are multiple ways for us to host you here at Milo. It's super simple. Uh, give us a call, 541-825-3200. We've got guest rooms, we've got RV hookups. Come be our guest, 541-825-3200. Maybe you know someone who should be here at Milo. Text the word Milo to 313131. Text Milo in all caps to 313131. We hope to see you here at Milo. Jill Morricone and I was watching that video and just kind of sat back and thought I want to go back to school. Did that make you want to go back to school? What an incredible program they have at Milo Adventist Academy and it's my privilege now to introduce to you we're going to have a Skype call with the principal of Milo Adventist Academy that is Mr. Randy Thornton. Mr. Randy are you there? I'm here Jill. What an incredible school you have there. Tell me just a bit about yourself. How long have you been at Milo and what is your journey been? And then we'll talk about the school. Yeah, I've been here at Milo for nine years now. Uh, I didn't start uh, with the idea of education in mind. I was a building contractor for more than 20 years, but God called me to education ministry and couldn't find a place that I would rather be than Milo. Amen. So talk to us about the mission statement of Milo Adventist Academy and what the mission of the school really is all about. Well, uh, our, our mission statement sits on three important uh, legs of the stool. Uh, first and foremost, uh, of course, uh, we want kids to get to know Jesus uh, better. And so we, we like to promote uh, every day the best friend relationship uh, with Jesus. And it's done uh, in so many ways that, you know, we, we, we have the standard, just, uh, you know, a daily experience talking with Jesus. But this COVID situation showed us as a staff how important it was to, to come regularly. The school day in an academy level uh, doesn't always start at the same time for every teacher like it does at, at elementary. And, and we just knew when everybody had to go home, and we still had a good number of students here, the international kids that couldn't get home. And we just said, we need to come together as a staff, as a family. And every day we came to pray and read scripture. So really, best friend relationship with Jesus is the first and, and most critical piece you know, we all uh, aspire to excellence in academics. That's another one of the uh, the, the pillars of our mission statement. Uh, and we value, uh, it's not always bigger is better. We've, we've had advanced placement type courses, but really just the, uh, the most sturdy and foundational education possible. Uh, we're doing some new and innovative things that maybe we'll get to share a little bit later with, with focusing on uh, the student and, and, and their individualized education, mastery learning it's called. But one of the things in the third uh, pillar of, of our mission is showing 
the kids, giving them an opportunity to experience the joy of service. Uh, I remember some time ago hearing my son uh, tell me while he was uh, in university at Walla Walla, uh, he said, hey, I talked to grandpa the other day and it was the most fascinating thing that that he shared with me that um, that the the most important part, maybe the, the 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 exclusive reason that God has put us here on this earth is to 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 serve each other. And that's a fundamental part of what we want kids first to experience in their own lives so that they can feel the passion and and start living every day from now until till the kingdom of heaven, uh, serving others is what it's really all about. Uh, and, and we wrap it up with, we wrap it up with this little saying in a safe, nurturing environment. Uh, like I shared in the video, it, it, it seemed like a cliche to me at first that, uh, here in, in, in this beautiful remote location, that it was a physical safety, but really no, it's a soul safety that, that, that I'm safe being me who God made me and Milo gives me that opportunity to, to learn and experience that. Amen. I love that, Mr. Randy. That's great. What a wonderful threefold, um, as you called it. I like that. There's Jesus is my best friend, excellent academics, and then experience the joy of service. I mean, that is what we are all called to do and to be as Christians. And what better way than to train young people in that? Talk to us a bit about the work study program. I was really fascinated by that when I watched the video yeah. um, and the work study program. Talk to us about that. You know, some time ago um, I learned uh, through some reading in the spirit of prophecy that it's so critical uh, again the importance of excellence in academics but uh, but sister white shared that that if we were to only be able to access a one-sided education and i'm grateful that that at this time in life have to be limited by that one thing and whether it was the book learning or whether practical life skills that she talks so much about, there's absolutely no question, she says, um, we must unhesitatingly answer that, that it's that practical life skills mm. that are most crucial to, to our uh, success in, in life and, again, serving others. So that's what's really drawn me and my staff to really embracing the the practical life skills. We have all of the excellent uh, connections with the academic classroom, all of the standard things that you would expect to experience, but we want to take it beyond that and work. When I was going through academy, it was simply a way to help you fund your your uh, Adventist education. Correct. But, but here we want it to be a core um, curriculum, not just a financial piece. So we, it, it's, it's part of a required uh, course of study here at Milo. And we kind of put the cherry on top with these vocational certificates uh, that you saw in the video and, and growing them every day. And a new one, we call it the innovation lab, you know, dealing with 3D printers and uh, CNC machines and some coding fun stuff. Uh, a, a new one, I, I'm, I'm grateful uh, I also again to mention Walla Walla University and a new program that they are making available, not just to Milo, but an introduction to engineering. Fits very well mm -hmm. into uh, our, our view of, of this vocational certificate opportunity. So what would be some of the vocational certificates that the students could um, receive? Yeah. I obviously heavy equipment might be one because I saw some of that yeah. or construction. Some so talk to us some of some of what those opportunities are for the students. Yeah. So like you mentioned, the heavy equipment um, operation and, and repair uh, construction. Uh, there, there is another option that we have culinary arts. Uh, we have. Uh, even one student that came to us last year from Russia, and she 
uh, wanted to have to get get more advanced learning, and she's taking a second year uh, after she graduated. We created an advanced level of, of culinary arts, and that innovation lab that I that I mentioned. Agriculture. I don't want to forget agriculture yes. has been a very fundamental part of of our program, both academically, uh, but but also you know the integration uh, with. The, uh, the cafeteria and getting uh, healthy and quality food for the kids uh, to eat and to learn um, how they could do this uh, themselves uh, when they, they graduate for, for life. And, and, our, and our Milo Market uh, is, is the name we call it, that a lot of our produce and other things go into the market, which is a community outreach uh, probably more than anything for us. Uh, it's it's grown as a as a financial uh, benefit to the school, but I've heard uh, some of our staff, uh, pro- my my number one favorite staff, if I uh, can say that, my wife. <laughs> That's uh, a she, good thing. You she, can say that. <laughs> she she's talked about uh, how it's not important how much money we make in the market; it's the people that we draw in to our campus and that we can really can reach. So it's community building uh, there as well that we're trying to 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 build with our uh, academic programming too. That's really a win, win, win because it's helping the students and it's teaching them life skills, which is amazing. It's helping the school financially for the financial benefits that it would reap. And it's the joy of service. That was the third, I think, of your three-prong approach, that joy of service and outreach in the community. I love that. So let's shift to the mastery learning. What is mastery learning, individualized learning, and more student-focused instead of teacher-focused? What does that look like at Milo Academy? Well, you know, traditionally for more than 100 years um, in all forms of education, Adventist education included, it's been the sage on the stage, you know, that teacher up front, the font of knowledge, and that's a, a really good thing, but all students, all, all people, including us, we learn at different rates. And it just breaks my heart. Um, and I've, I see it every year as a teacher, as an administrator, um, students who need more time with a particular topic. And I see other students on the other end of the spectrum who are, are they, they got it and they're excited and raring to go uh, to the next level but we have to wait because we usually, again, typically take whole group um, at a time. But when we can in- individualize, then it gives the power back to the student for their own education. So mastery says, um, if I don't quite get this algebra topic and I need a little bit more time, we're going to give you that time. We're not going to move ahead and leave you uh, behind us or that advanced student. We're not going to hold you back. We're going to let you um, get off and run with that. So mastery learning doesn't leave holes in their uh, academic planning. And we're, we're uh, grateful to engage in some uh, tools that have been developed, um, not super recently, but a, but a number of years ago through um, Marzano Research. And where it gives that pace of learning uh, to the student, always uh, teacher directed. There's still a lot of important um, whole class dialogue. Bible would probably be my my best example where we need that time, kind of like Sabbath school class, to to as a group to chew and to share between each other. Uh, you know, we've we've heard about the the the. the the old fashioned three, three R's reading, writing, and arithmetic. But a lot of times now today, we're talking about the four C's. And one of those is collaboration. Mm -hmm. Really, really important for us again, because it's the way that we were created for community right back from the garden of Eden. God saw that we needed each other. Mm -hmm. And so that collaboration in the learning environment is super critical so yeah, mastery learning, not leaving kids behind um, and letting them run at their speed. 
we're all individualized people. I mean, that's how God created us. So what a mm -hmm. wonderful concept to include that and involve that in the classroom instruction and the curriculum and what takes place. That is very good. We just have a few moments left. Let's shift to the international flavor at your school because mm -hmm. there's yeah. quite a few international students. And then talk to us about the student missionaries as well. Yeah, you know, we know that we live in a, a global community ever more today than, than, than ever before. You know, it's not something that, that I or we as a staff visioned. And how often do we see God's leading um, in our institutions and in our, in our own personal lives that way? But it was through our, our, our mission service, like, you know, virtually every academy and many other schools do, um, going out and and sharing and those those mission experiences, again, I think everybody sees this as we think we're going out to do a work for for somebody else, and and surely we accomplish that. But the work that's done in our hearts, I, the kids recognize that I got more out of that than I gave, and and that's why we want Milo to be. A global uh, community from those those outreach, if we want to call them that, activities. We made relationships. We go back home, and those relationships continue to uh, to build and and be nourished. And some of these these friends that the kids make when they're when they're somewhere in another continent, they say, "I want to I want to go to Milo too." And we say, sure, we've got a place for you. And that's how we built our international population. Near 35% of our, of our student body is uh, that. I, I love <clears throat> saying to, to many, that's exactly what heaven is going to look like. Because there aren't going to be any Adventists in heaven. No Americans in heaven. No, you name it, fill in the blank. We're all just going to be children of God together. So we're just grateful for that 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 whole family of God feel uh, that we uh, have here at Milo. Amen. Thank you so much, Principal Thornton, for taking time to share with us today what God is doing in Thank and you. through Milo Adventist Academy. want to remind you, if you have a young person who is interested in attending an academy, if you have want to financially support the ministry of what God is doing at Milo Adventist Academy or maybe help fund <laughs> some of those worthy students, you can always contact them at Milo Academy. Dot o -R -G. That's Milo, M-I-L-O, academy.org. At 3ABN, we stand in support of Christian Seventh-day Adventist education, and we're so grateful for what God is doing in and through Milo Adventist Academy. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Well, there you have it. You have heard about the Indiana Academy and the Milo Seventh-day Adventist Christian Academy two fine academies that we would like to encourage you to consider to bring your young people to continue their education, to continue their education and prepare them for college and prepare them to face life's difficulties with a stronger and firmer hold on Jesus Christ. Because these schools offer the teachings of Christ in addition to the regular academic subjects. We praise the Lord for these schools. We encourage you to pray for them. And we encourage you to pray for our young people that in today's time, they are facing one of the most difficult times to live in this world because we are living in the last days. And I praise the Lord for 3ABN. 3ABN that God has entrusted with a mission to preach the undiluted three angels' messages to the world. I want to thank you for your support of 3ABN and encourage you to continue supporting so that we can continue preaching the everlasting gospel 24 hours a day, reaching the world with a message that the world needs to hear during this time. As you know, things are happening at such a quick pace that we must do what we can to bring the gospel to as many people as possible in the shortest time as possible. And for those of you that are listening to me right now, that have not yet given their lives to Jesus Christ, I do have an invitation for you. Give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will begin to have peace and happiness that begins in this world and continues forever. God bless you.